The Way to the South. In 1918, Jung wrote a paper entitled On the Unconscious. He noted that all of us stood between two worlds, the world of external perception and the world of perception of the unconscious. This depicts his experience at this time. He wrote that Schriller had claimed that the approximation of these two worlds was through art. By contrast, Jung argued, I am of the opinion that the union of rational and irrational truth is to be found not so much in art as in the symbol per se, for it is the essence of the symbol to contain both the rational and the irrational. Symbols, he argued, stem from the unconscious, and the creation of symbols was the most important function of the unconscious While the compensatory function of the unconscious was always present, the symbol creating function was only present when we were willing to recognize it. Here we see him continuing to eschew viewing his productions as art. It was not art, but symbols that were were of paramount importance. The recognition and recovery of these of the symbol creating power is portrayed in Lieber Novus. It depicts Jung's attempt to understand the psychological nature of symbolism and to view his fantasies symbolically. He concluded that what was unconscious in any given epoch was only relative and changing. What is required now was the remolding of our views in accordance with the active forces of the unconscious. Thus, the task confronting him was one of translating the conceptual, the conceptions gained through his confrontations with his soul and expressed it in a literary, in a symbolic manner, Lieber Novice, into a language compatible with the contemporary outlook of the spirit of the times. The following year, he presented a paper in England before the Society of Psychological Research on the Psychological Foundations of Belief in Spirits. Here he differentiated between two situations in which the collective unconscious becomes active. In the first, an individual experience experiences a crisis and the collapse of his and her or her hopes and expectations. In the second, a time of great social, political, or religious upheaval occurs. At such moments, whatever has been suppressed by prevailing attitudes necessarily accumulates in the collective unconscious. Strongly, intuitive individuals become aware of what has been suppressed and try to translate the material into communicable ideas. If they succeed, the results are salutary. Either way, the contents of the unconscious had a disturbing effect. If they remain suppressed, Jung said, there is the danger that the collective unconscious will replace reality, which is pathological. If instead the collective unconscious is activated as a result of collective processes, the individual may feel disorientated, but the state is not pathological. Jung's differentiation of these two possibilities suggests that he he viewed his own confrontation with the unconscious as falling under the second heading, namely, activation of the collective unconscious due to general cultural upheaval. His initial fear of impending insanity in 1913 lay in his failure to realize this distinction at the time. Throughout this period, Jung was engaged in historical research on the type problem. Beginning in 1916, he gave presentations on the subject before the Association for Analytical Psychology and the Psychological Club. 
These were developed and expanded in psychological types which appeared in 1921 to widespread acclaim. The English edition appeared in 1923 and received many laudatory reviews. As regards the working over of themes of Libra Novice, the most important section of psychological types was chapter 5, Type Problem in Poetry. The basic issue discussed was how the problem of opposites could be resolved through the production of the uniting or reconciling symbol. The chapter presents a far-ranging historical overview of the issue. Jung offered details analysis of the resolution of the problem of opposites in Hinduism, Taoism, Meister Eckhart's, and in the late 19th and early 20th century, the works of Carl Spittler. This chapter can also be read in terms of a mediation on some of the historical sources that directly informed Jung's conception of Libra Novice. Finally, it heralds the introduction of an important method. Rather than directly discuss the issue of the reconciliation of opposites in Libra Novice, he sought out historical analogies and commented upon them. In 1921, the self emerged as a psychological concept. Jung defined it as follows. Inasmuch as I is only the center of my field of consciousness, it is not identical with the totality of my psyche, being merely a complex among other complexes. Hence I discriminate between the I and the self. Since the I is only the subject of my consciousness, while the self is the subject of my totality. Hence, it also includes the unconscious psyche. In this sense, the self would be an extension, non-material, which embraces and includes the I. In unconscious fantasy, the self often appears as the superordained or ideal personality. As Faust, as Faust in, is in relation to Goth and Zarathustra in Nietzsche, he equated the Hindu notion of Brahman, Atman, with the self. At the same time, he provided a definition of the soul. He argued that the soul possessed qualities that were complementary to the persona, and in the sense, and in that sense, had what the conscious attitude lacked. <coughs> the complementary character of the soul also affected its sexual character. A man had a feminine soul or anima, and a woman had a masculine soul or animus. This corresponded to the fact that men and women had both masculine and feminine traits. He also noted that the soul gave rise to images that were assumed to be worthless from the rational perspective. There were four ways of using them. The first possibility of making use of them is artistic. If one is in any way gifted in that direction, a second is philosophical speculation. A third is quasi-religious, leading to heresy and the founding of sex sets. And a fourth way of employing the dynamis of these images is to squander it in every form of licentiousness. From this perspective, the psychological utilization of these images would represent a fifth way. For it to succeed, psychology had to distinguish itself clearly from art, philosophy, and religion. This indicates the various possibilities Jung rejected. In terms of publication, the next few years were some of the quietest in Jung's career. He contributed contributed to the symposium of the British Psychological Society, the question of the therapeutic value of ab reactions, 
1922 saw the publication of a lecture to the Society for German Language and Literature in Zurich on the relations of analytical psychology to litig literary artworks. There were, new, there were no new publications in 1923 and 1924.